The problem with setting a step-by-step -step process of how to learn logic is everyone's different. If you're a guitar player, probably the first thing you want to start doing is laying down some guitar tracks, which would be audio. If you're a keyboard player, you probably want to lay down some MIDI, either external or some of the software instruments. Um, if you're a producer or something, you might want to start laying down some beats and, and you know work with Ultrabeat, the drum machine. Well, the first thing Logic does is it gives you a template library here, and you can see you know, an empty project, there'll be nothing on there, or some guitar tones, these are effects that you can run your guitar through, or a collection of the instruments in Logic. All of these are great places to start. If you're a composer and you want to start, you know, composing either songwriter, rock, R&B, orchestral, hip-hop, electronic, you can do that. If you're a producer and you want to start mixing a project, you can do that. But we're going to just start with an empty project. And this is exactly what you will see. Logic will open a window and present you with an option to add some tracks. Do we want to do audio tracks, software, or external MIDI? And then we have some options here. Now, I've got, I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, audio instrument and we'll do mono and we'll do uh, actually no we'll do stereo because I have a keyboard in here you can choose surround as well I'm gonna choose uh, you know what it's it's um it's not using my sound card so we're going to uh, I'm gonna have to actually set that up in a second so we'll leave everything default right now we just a stereo from inputs one and two and I'll go ahead and create those and now if I go to logic preferences and audio this will be the menu and you see it's wanting to record from my built-in microphone I want it to record from the 828 that's my audio interface I also have a duet but that's not installed so I'm gonna do the 828 right here I leave I will leave everything default for now we'll talk about how to uh, optimize your system down the road but for now just leave things at default and see how it works and so we'll want to apply these changes and changes are applied I can close this and now I want to go ahead and change the inputs so this is the channel strip for this track okay this one on the left so I'm going to go ahead and change the input. If I click on this, I can choose different inputs. And I believe 5 and 6 is my organ. Maybe it's 3 and 4. No, it is 5 and 6. So we're going to change that to 5 and 6. I'm going to set this to record. It's going to ask where I want to save it and it already creates a logic folder that's usually in your music folder um, so I'm just gonna leave I'm gonna actually you know what I'm gonna put this on the desktop so uh, shift command D gets you to the desktop real quick I'm not gonna bother name, name, naming it I'm just gonna save it and then if I hit the R button or if I hit record in the transport down here a click will happen and it starts recording and there we have it now if I play back we'll hear this what I just replayed Now how's that for simple, okay? Now let's say you wanted to create a MIDI track. You come to this plus sign and you create new tracks. And now I'm going to use a software instrument and I'm just going to do create one. And I'll let it do that and it creates the track here. And then the library opens over here with all of these wonderful instruments that we installed today. And you'll see an acoustic piano. I'll go ahead and create an acoustic piano. And 
using my MIDI keyboard. We'll try and get that playing. So there you have it. Now if I wanted to record this, again, same principle, hit R or hit record. Oops, except, what did I do? I had the uh, first track selected and it was record enabled. I don't want that. So I've got this track selected. This is record enabled. We're going to start from the beginning. And there you have it. I was able to immediately start recording MIDI and start recording audio. And that's exactly what you want to do when you start Logic for the first time. Get in there and start making music. Um, don't be afraid of it. It's really simple. And I just showed you how to create new tracks and start recording from the beginning. Now, if you want to change these and edit them in any way, you see these tool menus over here. We've got pointer tools, pencils, erasers, text, scissors. Let's look at the scissors tool. If I, if I click and drag over these and select both of them and then hit the scissors tool, it wants to know if I want to keep or shorten these. Well, we're not going to worry about it. I'm just going to keep. And it cut both of those. And now if I go back to the pointer tool, and there's easier ways to get to those tools. We'll show you later. I can select these again. I can move them. I can put them in front of each other. I can put them all over the place and that's how you can start arranging your uh, little compositions. So this is a, the very first thing that you can start doing. You can start recording and you can start editing your tracks simply by creating new tracks and going over to the tools and figuring out what you want to do. A lot of them are self-explanatory like solo, mute, zoom. And all of these tools are really powerful with lots of features and options and we'll get into all of that down the road but obviously you see how easy it is to launch logic for the very first time and start recording audio or midi so what are you waiting for go get to it if you're really serious about becoming a logic studio power user drop what you're doing and head to logicstudiotraining.com we've got hours of logic studio tutorials for beginners like you've seen here and some really advanced stuff to take your music to the next level See you there.